Some of you are already convinced that you do want the BMW i3 and as you're searching through all the apps and websites and stuff looking for inventory of i3s, you may find that it's hard to find the one that you want with the specs that you want. So we're gonna go over how best to do that in this video. I have literally downloaded every app there was at the time that I downloaded apps and this was about three, two and a half years ago. And I found that there was one particular app that had the best inventory and had the best filtering system. And that is Car Gurus. So Car Gurus does have its own app. They also have a website and you can download that. And we're gonna go over how to navigate that so that you can find the i3 that you're looking for. Okay, the frustration you've had so far is that since Car Gurus is not specific to any particular brand, and every brand of vehicle has their own special way of calling the same thing different names, um, you're gonna find that filtering will be a little bit difficult in, as far as trying to find the vehicle you're looking for. And so I'm gonna talk about how to navigate through the photos to find exactly the car you're looking for. And so what you're gonna do, the secret of this, is you're gonna go to the photos, and normally you're gonna see the exterior photos first because that's what catches people's eyes, right? And then you're gonna swipe left and you're gonna look at all the exterior photos before you get to the interior. So the secret is you're gonna swipe right and look at the interior photos first, okay? So Cargrews lets you navigate to the last photos by swiping right rather than having to swipe left, 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 left and go all the way to the end before you see the interior photos. The interior photos are very telling as far as what is included in the car. And most people are more concerned about the larger, wider screen. And so we're gonna go over that right now inside the car. In addition to the wider screen, there are two other packages apart from the Harman Kardon sound system package. There is the driver's package and there is the parking package. Okay, we're gonna go over the driver's package. The driver's package is the one I recommend having if you're gonna pick only one of the three options. And the reason why I recommend the driver's package, which I do not have, is because it has the auto cruise control. So the parking package is the one that has the self-parallel park feature, which sounds cool and is cool, but is more of a party trick because if you've parallel parked for any amount of time, then you're gonna find that you parallel parking on your own is going to be a lot easier than engaging the button and hoping that it senses that there's a space and going through all that. So if it were me and I were to do it over again, I would opt to get the driver's package. At the time that I got the 2016 car, I was looking specifically for the value package, which we won't get into in this video, but basically it did not have the driver's package available. It was basically a, a preset uh, number of options included in the car at what was a value package. And that was only available for three months out of 2016. So it's not very, very common. And even now I wouldn't recommend that car because of a number of other reasons. But if you're looking for a package and you're deciding between driver's package or parking package, I would go for the driver's package. So how do you tell in the interior, again, the photos on car gurus, how do you tell if it has the driver's package? simply looking at the pictures of the steering wheel. If you have blank spots here, it means you do not have the driver's package. So look for buttons that are here in the photos and you'll know that you do have the driver's package with auto cruise control. Another way to know that you have auto cruise control is this emergency button. So cars that do not have the driver's package will have one giant button like this. The ones that do have the driver's package, this will be divided into two. You'll have a smaller emergency button and below it, you'll have an icon. It's a green or yellowish circle. And so when you're looking through car gurus and you're looking at the photos, you're, it's gonna show the center console and just look for that icon and you'll know you have the driver's package. Again, no icon, no driver's package. Next, we're gonna go over the parking package. So one thing on the interior photos that is not a giveaway of whether it has parking package or not, I'm gonna show you in a second, but don't be misled into thinking that this extra button means that you do have parking package. It does not mean that. And that's this button right here. Although this is the button that you press for parallel parking, if you have the parker's package, there are cars that do not have the parker's package that still have that button. And I'm not sure exactly what that does, but it does indicate that you have sensors on the outside, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it will parallel park on its own. If you want to know whether you have the Harman Kardon sound system in the cars you're looking for, look right there in the interior photos. This black portion will have the Harman Kardon speaker. If it doesn't have it, you do not have that package. Generally cars 
do not have that as it was not a very popular upgrade. We're now gonna go back to the outside. So when you look at the pictures of the outside of the vehicle, you're gonna know what to look for to decide or to determine whether it has the parking package, driver's package or whatnot. Uh, since we left off on the parking package, we'll go ahead and continue with that. And we're gonna look for the sensors on the bumpers. On the exterior photos, you'll look for these little circles. And that just means that it has sensors for the parking package. And you'll see the similar ones on the rear of the car. You'll see on the front windshield, this is actually my aftermarket dash cam. But for cars that do have a driver's package, you'll see a large module right here with a sensor that's similar to the Subaru offering, if you're familiar with that. Basically, they're just a large sensor here that will read cars in front of you and judge the distance and will change the speed of your vehicle and keep the distance accordingly. One thing you want to notice also is the style of rim. So a giveaway of which cars are base models for whether that's what you're looking for or that's what you want to avoid, you're going to look at the wheels. So the wheels, the base models generally, not as a complete rule, but generally will have the pizza style rims. And what I mean by pizza is it's all gray and you're going to see little triangles in there like a pie or a pizza. And that generally will tell you that the car is a base model, but that's not always the case. The reason why it's not always the case is for used vehicles, sometimes the owner or even the dealer may end up changing the wheels. So you're not necessarily going to know, and it's not a specific rule, but it is something that I look at and I've noticed that a lot of base models do have that pizza style rim. And as for the tell of what the other rims mean, I'll leave a link in the description below of an article that someone wrote about the staggered setups and the various choices of rims and what they mean. Yes. In addition to the driver's package and the parking package, there's also, believe it or not, a smoker's package and also a tech package. When people are looking at the tech package, generally that means that it has the wider screen and the GPS. But as far as filtering it through the various apps to find out whether it has the tech package or not, I wouldn't necessarily rely on that just because a lot of filters from different websites don't do that very accurately. You're gonna to wanna to look at the interior pictures and see for yourself directly that does have that widescreen that you're looking for.